<laughs> Hi folks, I uh, hope you are okay today. I just want to talk to you about um, a visit that I had a few days ago uh, by two Jehovah's Witnesses. I want to talk about my experience of what my impressions were uh, and what I thought of the visit. They came uh, on a Wednesday evening about six o'clock and they left round about half past nine. There was a black man round about 45 years of age and then there was an elderly man round about late 60s, early 70s. And um, they came on my request because I was ca coming home from a church in the morning, I I in the afternoon, before I was coming to the meeting here. And um, I got talking to uh, some uh, black Jehovah's Witnesses and we, I was asking them questions about Bible translations. They came <clears throat> to the house. Uh, they said they would come to the house and then this uh, black um, man and this elderly white man came and we had uh, consequently a, a discussion. And, and that's what I want to share with you. Um, the, the men came, they, they were very polite, very nice and uh, very uh, enjoyable to talk to them, uh, very friendly and um, amicable uh, people. <clears throat> they asked me what I wanted to talk about before they came to see me, so I suggested Bible translations. They knew that I read the King James Version, so when they came, uh, the elderly man pulled out some very uh, scholarly information about the King James Version and was criticizing the King James. This put me on the back foot because I wasn't prepared for this kind of onslaught on the King James because I thought that they accepted the King James. Uh, he was saying that we don't know some of the editors uh, some words like bishop were put in politically, etc. Um, they were saying that uh, one uh, John chapter one verse one has been badly translated because it was trinitarian biased, etc. This uh, this went on for a few minutes, and uh, fortunately, I I wasn't I didn't meet with them to completely put them right. I didn't do a lot of study. I did some research, but I didn't do a lot of study. I wanted to, if they left, I wanted them to feel that I loved them, that I cared about them. That's what I wanted, really. So, And I wanted to understand where they were coming from. So I just listened quite a lot, and then I responded. So I didn't have a lot of notes or things prepared. But I did bring one or two things. I did re read up on their Bible translation. And I did have some information on the King James Version. Um, so as this onslaught on the King James Version was going, I said, well, don't you use the King... Um, haven't you used the King James Version? They said, yeah. I said, well, the thing is about the King James is we do know um, many of the writer, uh, many of the translators who were involved, and they were experts in Hebrew and Greek. Do we know anybody who, who was on the translator committee of the Watchtower Bible Society New World Bible Translation. They said no, and they told me the reason was because they said that it brings glory to man if we know who the man is, but if we don't know who the man is, it, it brings glory to God. Well, I thought that was a bit strange because that means you can't check out their information. Uh, you can't check out whether the translation is true or not. Uh, I did go on the website and I noticed that on their translation that there were some issues that one article was saying they believed in a literal translation of the Bible from Hebrew to Greek and then another article saying it was more looser, more trying to get it in modern equivalent. I brought this attention to them. They didn't really know that or fully understand what I was trying to, to get at. Uh, they said, well, you know, we have a better translation. We translate the name of God. And I thought, again, that was strange. Well, they translate the name of God uh, correct as they see it in Hebrew, from Hebrew into 
into English or Greek into English, but yet their article said that they take a more looser translation method. The other thing I noticed is that they use modern um, text, uh, modern scholarly understanding of ancient Greek text uh, from Westcott and Hort. And I said, well, the King James is best, be better manuscripts uh, from the Textus Receptus, which can be traced right back to its early roots and was a good uh, preserv preserved text. Um, they didn't fully understand this argument, and, and then I explained to them that Westcott and Hort, who was behind much of the modern Bible translator text, that, um, that they were spiritualists or they were into spirit spiritism. <coughs> They were behind many of the modern Bible translations, and the uh, New World Translation was based on the scholarship. Uh, the elderly gentleman was quite surprised about this. He said, oh, I didn't know that. So we had a bit of a standoff on the King James when I said that. When I mentioned Westcott and Hort, they kind of like, hmm, okay, we thought we had him. Now we haven't, but we'll just leave it. So... So, I hope that I made them think about their Bible translation there. I, I did check the scholarly information. There was quite a bit of scholarly information about the so-called uh, scholars that had verified the New World Bible translation was correct. But I'm not so sure whether they're accurate or not. I didn't have time to check that out. I know that... Um, um, uh, what's his name? Bruce Metzer, who's dead now, did comment on the uh, New World Bible translation and said that it was an atrocious uh, translation. But for some reason or some other, they were able on the website to get information about, to, to say that their translation was a good translation. But if you don't know the scholars, if you don't know who's behind it, then you've got to be very careful. And I think a lot of the debate and discussion that we had came down to this fact that when I'm using my Bible translation, the King James, they were attacking it. They, they were really attacking it because they could see that my Bible translation back to Trinitarian understanding of God. Um... So I would, I would say to Christian apologists and evangelists and pastors and teachers and Christians out there that if you meet a Jehovah's Witness, they're going to have a lot of information on Bible translations. They're going to slate your Bible translations. They're doing exactly what the Muslims used to do, uh, uh, do, and that is undermine the authority of the Bible by attacking Bible translations. So as Christians, you need to prepare yourself and understand what Bible translation you're using, why you're using it, is it an accurate translation or not. Uh, James White, in my research, like I said, I did a bit of research, but he said the average Jehovah's Witness spends 30 hours, 30 hours in ministry, and some can go up to 90 hours, and they spend a lot of time studying, and he said the average Jehovah's Witness could run, run rings round an MA student at seminary because they spend so many hours on these small issues, but they know a lot on these small issues. So we had this kind of standoff on the Bible translations, and the discussion all through the evening kind of wasn't going... Sorry about this. Sorry about this, I don't know what's happened. Forgive me. We'll get there. Something's just happened, I don't know what. We 
bagaimana, bagaimana. Over there, sorry about this. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. So, like I said, the the discussion. Um, we we talked a lot about the Trinity, and and uh, the discussion seemed to flow. Sorry about this. I know it's going to be uh, for me. for me yeah sorry Okay, I'll just be with you in a second, folks. Okay, just give me a minute.
Sorry about that, folks. Uh, someone phoning a friend, a Jewish Christian there. Um, the, the conversation then went on to, they asked me, well, how can you believe Jesus is God if he was sent by the Father? So if he was sent by the Father, he must have been created. I explained to them uh, that in Philippians chapter 2, it says he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, excuse me, but made himself of no reputation and humbled himself even to the death of the cross. And I tried to explain to them that he is the word that came down in human flesh and he had to obey the Father in order to pay back and sort out what Adam did. Um, I said to them, who was Jesus before he came down? They said, uh, 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 the, the Archangel Michael. I said, and when he came to earth, he was Jesus. When he went back, he was Archangel Michael. I said, does that make sense? They said, yeah. I thought it didn't make sense what, whatsoever. Um, then they said, well, how do you answer the verse where it says, my father and I are one in John 10? So I took them to a passage where it talks about in John 10, where Jesus says, none shall pluck them out of my hands. And then I said, if you look, it says, and my father is greater than all, none shall pluck them out of his hand. And I said, look at the parallel. He's saying none can pluck them, pluck them out of his hands, and none can pluck them out of his father's hands. So they're equal, equated together. So when it comes to my father and I are one, for the Jew, understanding that, he would see it as God. I said, there is a passage in John 14, uh, which talks about where you, or John 17, where it talks about praying that we be one. I said, you could use that to offset what I'm saying, but I think in this context, it's about the Father and the Son being one. And they said, but what about the psalm? Because there's a psalm quoted later on in that chapter 10. And I said, well, if you read the psalm and if you read the quotation, the Lord is saying you're disobeying. And if you believe in using the word God when you're disobedient, how much more should you use the word God for me, who is obedient? And, and they were quite struck with my exposition and expanded. I, I, I studied that chapter quite in depth a few weeks ago, so I was able to expound it for them. And they did thank me that they never really fully understood these things from that perspective. Till you know, so I, they appreciated that. They said they'd put support into Pentecostals through the week, but they weren't able to stay because they were getting told about this and that. But they were able to stay with me because I was listening to them. Um, then they quoted me about the Ethiopian eunuch and said, "What eunuch? What do you think of that?" And I said, "Well." It's about Isaiah 53, and I took them to Isaiah 53 and about Jesus dying on the cross. And they said that, well, it, you know, it shows you that, you know, we need a, an authority. We need a, an organization to teach us. And unless you have an organization, you can't really understand. I asked them a question. Look, I've got five hours to live. What is the truth that I need to know to become a Jehovah's Witness? And they said the truth that you need to know is that we, as the, the Jehovah's Witness, have the authority that we are the ones that God has given to, to tell you the truth and you need to come over to us. And I said, well, my authority is in Christ, that, that Christ died for me, he gave his life for me, he rose again, and it's in Christ. And if I trust in him and him alone, I'm saved. For it says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. With that, we shook hands and they've left. And, you know, it was a great time. They were lovely people. I didn't go into a lot of attacking the job as witness. I didn't criticize them. I didn't. I just listened to what they had to say. And then I bounced off what they were saying and expounding it from a more biblical perspective. And I left them with the, with the sense that they were loved and valued. They had cake and tea and they left 
and they were very grateful for the cake and they were very grateful for the tea. And I, and I had a really nice time with them. I really cared about these people. And um, I really think it's sad that they follow a, a, an organization and it's sad that they think what they teach is biblical, but it isn't biblical. And um, and if you're a Jehovah's Witness out there, I would just ask you to to study the Word of God for yourself. The elderly gentleman gave me a quotation from a Catholic dictionary that said the Trinity was invented in 400 AD. And I, I said to the gen elderly gentleman, I didn't want to embarrass him, but I said, are you aware of Catholic dictionaries where influenced scholars, Catholic scholars were influenced by modernism? And the chances are you can't trust many of these Catholic dictionaries for their biblical scholarship. You've got to be very, very discerning. I said, and secondly, when they say 4th century AD, the Trinity was invented, I said, that's not true. If you read Tertullian, he's 2nd century, he developed the Trinity. And then in the 3rd century, you have Athanasius. And I asked the elderly gentleman, have you read them? And he said, no. And I said, I don't want to embarrass you, but I've read these and you're wrong in what you're saying. And I could have embarrassed him by going into detail, but I didn't. I just said, just go and read it yourself. And I would encourage you as a Jehovah's Witness to just go and read your Bible in a, a, without the watchtower's material plumping down your brain. You know, even the, the black man said, you know, you need the Holy Spirit to teach you. But they believe the Holy Spirit is a power. And if you believe the Holy Spirit is a power, you're in unbelief because the Holy Spirit is God. So I would ask you to be open to the Holy Spirit. In fact, let's read a passage. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. And I would just ask you as a Jehovah's Witness to really ask yourself, the teaching that you have, have you really studied it yourself? Or is it all the material that you've been given by the Jehovah's Witnesses? Have you really been taught of God? How do you know your translation is right? Just because the Watchtower says? It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of the world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the, wisdom, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world un unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, ye the deep things of God. For the for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. You see, we need the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, to teach us to open our eyes. And unless you begin to see that for yourself, you're never going to question the Jehovah's Witness organization. And I, I just want to say to you as a Jehovah's Witness that you're building your faith on the witnesses. You're building your faith on the watchtower. 
And when it collapses, you're going to be left bereft. And you're not going to go back to church. You're just going to go and be an atheist or go off. Because your confidence has not been in God, but in man. And I would encourage you to have your confidence in Christ. Have your confidence in Jesus. Put your faith and trust in him. He says in John 11, I am the resurrection and, and the life. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. Have your confidence in Christ and he'll never let you down. He'll never forsake you. You can stand in the midst of your problems and troubles if you trust in Jesus. Your confidence must be in the Son of God. Your confidence must be in his death. You know, uh, two scriptures. Two scriptures and then we're done. They asked me, what, how do you discern what's true? And they said, the Jehovah's Witness do evangelism. They show love to each other. So therefore, that's the truth. But there's also another test of truth. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed and as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received let him be accursed let him be accursed let him be accursed if you don't preach the gospel it's a cursed gospel it's a cursed organization if the gospel is not being preached and what is the gospel Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground he hath not form or nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. We is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, that we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed all oh, we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jehovah's Witness, you need to know that Christ took your punishment. You need to know that Christ took your wrath. You need to know there is a heaven and hell. Those Witness brothers said to me that there is no hell, but the Bible teaches it. Do a study. Get your King James, get your dictionary and study. There is a hell and Christ took your hell. He was nailed to that cross and had a crown of thorns on his head and he was taking your hell. He was taking your judgment. He was dying in your place. And he was not just a man, he was the God man. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then it says he created and only God creates. One, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. And then it says in verse 14, the word became flesh. He was the God man that died on that cross and took the punishment for your sin. And then it says in Romans chapter 2, from verse 21 to 24, it says, The just shall live by faith. We are declared right on account of Christ's death and righteousness and his resurrection. All that he has done is put to our account. But it is by faith we are saved. Yes, we're to do good deeds. Yes, we're to be obedient. It says in uh, John chapter 15, verse 1, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You must bear fruit. We are to be in the vine first, then we bear fruit. But we have to be in the vine of Christ and trust in him. We have to look to him. My friends, as Jehovah's Witnesses, you're deluded because you're trusting in an organization you're trusting in an organization that's secretive, that doesn't tell you the truth. You're trusting in an organization that has perverted your mind and given you false doctrine. You're trusting in an organization that is perverting your mind against the Holy Scriptures. 
You're trusting in an organization that is bringing the glory of Christ down to a mere man when he is the Son of God, God incarnate. I know the literature. I have read some of the literature where you say that, you know, the Trinity is from the Middle East, uh, from uh, uh, God's before and all the rest. These are perverted things that are being taught and they're not actually scriptural and they're not actually accurate historically. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is this. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. There is therefore, Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Your confidence is not in Christ. Your confidence is not in the Word of God. You think it is. You think you're steeped in the Scripture. You think you're steeped in the truth. But you're not. You're steeped in the watchtowers indoctrination. You're you're, 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 you're indoctrinated by what they're saying. You're indoctrinated by their false teaching. And they perverted your mind against the truth. They blinded your mind against the truth. It says, Satan comes as an angel of light. And I want you to be strong in the faith. I want you to be strong in the truth. I want you to be strong. You say, well, they don't tell us. You haven't got Jehovah in your translation, haven't we? There are evangelical Bible translations such as the uh, American Standard Version and Derby Bible use the word Jehovah. So that's not true. It's not true. It's not true. You're believing a lie. You're believing false doctrine. You're believing people, organ an organization that is taking the authority of Christ to itself. You don't need to be in that organization to be saved. You don't need to be in the Jehovah's Witness teaching to be saved. You need to be in Christ. It says here, Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation in Christ. No condemnation in Him. It's in Christ. It's to Christ. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It says, I am the light. I am I am Christ. I am the Savior. I am the Lord. He says, every knee in Philippians 2, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. Your confidence has to be in Him. And if it's in Him, when people forsake you like Demas, Paul said, Demas has forsaken us who love this present world. When they flock, when they left the Lord Jesus, the you know, he was still strong. When they lost, when they left Paul, Paul was still strong. If you'll be strong in the truth of your trusting in Christ, you'll be strong if if you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses and they and they reject you and cut you off. You'll be strong because you're not resting in an organization. You're not resting in a a, a movement you're resting in Christ. You're looking to Christ. And you'll be strong. Because he's the one that saves. I'll tell you a couple of stories. The story of a guy who, who um, did um, worked on the trains. And he would pull a lever for the train to go over the bridge. And... The train was coming fast and it was coming to the bridge and he had a few moments to pull that lever and as he was about to pull it, his son fell under the lever. If he pulled it, he'd kill his son. If he left, if he pulled it, he would kill his son but save the train. If he didn't do it, the train would crash and people would be killed. He had a moment's choice. He pulled it. The train came over. He lost his son. The people on the train were looking at him thinking he was silly, but he sacrificed his son to save them. You don't realize that he sacrificed his son to save you. Christ died in your place to give you life. He died in your place to give you a future. And every 
You don't have to establish your righteousness by trying to work your way into the kingdom. No, all you have to do is rest in Christ. Have fellowship with God through Christ. Know that your sins have been taken away, that you're washed in the blood of Christ. There's a story of a, a woman who went to Puerto Rico, a girl, and she became a prostitute. And her mom went to look for her, couldn't find her. And she, was, she came back, she left pictures of herself all over Puerto Rico. She come back, she couldn't find her daughter. Her daughter came downstairs with the client. She went into the toilet, she saw a picture of her mum. She picked the picture up and she looked behind and it said this, I don't care what you have done, come home. If we turn to, it says in uh, Romans 8, you know, Abba Father, verse 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, Romans 8, 16. Uh, Romans 8, 15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. You see, we can have fellowship with God. No fear. It's not a slavish fear. We have peace with God. And we can come home to the Father. Um, Luke 15, I think. Luke 15. Luke 15, verse 15, And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with hus that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose, came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. Come to your father, come to the Lord, and trust in him, and find forgiveness at the cross. And be washed in, in the cross and clean in the cross in the blood of Christ. Have faith. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I'm the chief of sinners. Cleanse me. And may that cross be your rock. May it be your foundation. May Christ be your rock. And then when men let you down, when organizations let you down, when churches even let you down, you're not going to lose your faith because you're standing on the rock of Jesus Christ. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. You might be weak, but he's mighty. Trust in him, faith in him. Rest in him as a witness. Let God teach you his word. Let God open your eyes. Let God show you the truth. Don't be discouraged. Don't be Info, don't leave the Jehovah's Witnesses and then abandon faith because you've been let down or you, it, it, it's, it's come to light that it's not true and you, you, you then turn away from God. No, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. His name is Jesus. He can give you hope. Keep faith, but faith in Christ, faith in the Lord, the Savior who came and died for you. Put your confidence in him. Please. Put your confidence in him, and he'll not let you down. Let's sing a song. And Two or one. Have confidence in him. Not man. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. 
pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fire re cloudy pillar lead me on my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee, I will ever give to thee. I'm asking you today as a Jehovah's Witness, I know that you're following this and you really, really believe what you're following is the truth. But I want to say to you, it's not the truth. There is a beauty and a glory and an honor and a knowledge of God that you know nothing of. And I want you to know that. Know the living Jehovah. Know the living God. Know him, the mighty God. And you come by the blood of Christ. The precious blood of the Lamb shed for you on that cross. Come to the blood of Christ. Know that your sins can be forgiven, washed and clean. And you can know the living God the living Savior, and all will be well through that blood. Trust in him, my friend. Trust in Christ. God bless you.